Hello, my name is Michael Lambert, and uh, today I want to talk a little bit about our our leader, the, the, the great loser, uh, Rishi Sunak. And uh, the question why he's hanging around, really. I, I think we've been very unlucky with our prime ministers over the past few years. We had Cameron, who ran away after, after rather irresponsibly holding the referendum with a, uh, a simple majority. We then had uh, Theresa May, who just couldn't cope with all the crazy people on the right wing of the Conservative Party. She was followed by uh, uh, Johnson, uh, a man who probably did more damage to this country than uh, than anybody else ever in history. Uh, a, a man who was dishonest, who was incompetent, who was uh, totally self-obsessed and, 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 and lazy. And uh, he, in due course, was replaced by a rather stupid, thick-skinned woman, uh, Liz Truss, who lasted precisely seven weeks. And uh, she was then replaced by the person who she beat in the leadership election, Rishi Sunak, who is now now in charge. Uh, and uh, he's a man who seems to be totally deluded. This is a man who's never had any real experience of life, a man who's never had to struggle, never had any uh, financial worries. Uh, a man who seems totally, totally out of touch. And every week that goes past, I think we realise more and more how out of touch he is. He, he is the captain of the Titanic, who after we've hit the, hit the iceberg and after we're sinking, the water's coming, flood again, he's telling us all what a wonderful job he's doing and how everything is so good and, uh, and how he's going to spend lots and lots of money on redecorating the ballroom for, 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 for the next week. Um, uh, a man is just hopelessly, hopelessly out of touch and everyone everyone knows this we, we we've all lost everyone has lost confidence even people who supported him have lost confidence in him it seems he's got almost no supporters whatsoever you very seldom hear anybody supporting him apart from the the, 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 the cabinet members who just have to uh, because they are members of the cabinet uh, everyone else seems to have abandoned him I think he's generally extremely un, uh, unpopular and uh, you can see this by all the, the factions within the Tory party that, uh, that oppose him or some of his policies. I mean, if you think back over the last two or three years, we've had the, uh, uh, the New Conservatives, we've had the ERG, the European Research Group, we've had the Northern Research Group, none of them did any research whatsoever, I'm sure. We had the Common Sense Group, the biggest misnomer ever, I would have thought. Uh, no turning back, we had One Nation Conservatives. And last week, we had, of course, the grand, grand launching of Popular Conservatives, Popcoms. Under, under, who else? But the most unsuccessful, thick skinned Prime Minister this country has ever had, Liz Truss. This trust supported by a load of crazies, people like Rhys Mogg and Lee Anderson, great bedfellows, those two, and Simon Clark, and all the other nutters who want, they want to really clamp down on uh, immigration, do everything possible to stop these foreigners coming here, and who want to, above all, cut taxes, cut taxes for rich people, make rich people even richer, because that's the way you, that's where you do well with the economy when you're desperate. Uh, because just about every public service is short of money, cut taxes. And you've got all these Tory MPs saying they're not standing here because they all know the game's up. Uh, I think so far it's somewhere between 50 and 60 Tory MPs have said that they're not going to stand in the next general election. I think the Tories, I did read somewhere last week, said that they, that if any further Tory MPs are going to announce that they're not standing, would they kindly stagger their announcements because they don't, they don't want to look like a, a, a rush for the exits, a stampede to leave. And yet, uh, Sunas responds, he's so deluded. He seems to think that if he keeps appearing on television, keeps giving interviews, where he's always making gaffes, he, somehow or other that's going to, that's going to do the trick. Everybody goes, everybody Everyone's going to start saying, oh, he's not so bad as we thought he was meant to do. Ooh, he says he's doing well, and uh, oh, yeah, perhaps we'll support him. Instead of that, his support is, is, is flooding away all the time. The more he appears on television, I think the more unpopular he comes, because he's so, he is so out of touch. This is a man who's never, ever, ever had to struggle for money, never had to struggle in life at all. Uh, and yet we're faced with so many crises which are concerning lack of money, you know, NHS and uh, schools and... Uh, uh, so many other things that really need more more money, but no, uh, he uh, 
he has other things on his mind. His 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 main concern above everything else is uh, not losing. He doesn't want to lose. He's a bad loser. He's tetchy. He doesn't like being challenged. He doesn't mind being criticised. You're very quick to uh, uh, to get a bit ratty. You know, he's a man who, as I've said before, has absolutely no political skills whatsoever. You know, we all know there are politicians who are very clever, very bright, very smart, and they will not make gaffes, not do stupid things. This man, Sunak, is making gaff after gaff after gaff. Only last week there was a business, wasn't there, with the, uh, um, uh, Piers Morgan in the interview, uh, challenging him to a bet that he wouldn't get any planes off to Rwanda before the end of the year. Now, any other politician, almost any other politician, would said, look, this is, it's a serious matter, it's an important matter, I don't bet on things like that. But no, no, he said, uh, he said, he shook his hand, yes, he took the bet. And he does such bad judgment. And then the next day he's in uh, PMQs and uh, uh, Brianna Gay's mother was in the public gallery and uh, uh, he made some cheap remark at, uh, uh, at Starmer in extremely poor taste. Just another gaffe because he, 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 he's out of touch. You know, he blames everybody else if anything goes wrong. I mean, for example, the, uh, these massive waiting lists of 7 million. So they do government policy. It's the doctors going on strike. They're, they're, they're responsible for, 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 for the uh, long waiting lists. It's always somebody else. And uh, when he makes these gaffes, somebody else has to go out. One of the, uh, the gang of real second raters that are in the cabinet now are sent out around the studios to defend him. Last week it was uh, uh, Laura Trott. Uh, if you've heard, the, if you've not heard the interview with uh, with Emma Davies on BBC at five o'clock, uh, uh, um, it, it's a classic. Uh, and the woman is clearly ignorant; she's got, she's got a clue. Yet she's defending a prime minister who's absolutely desperate. And you look at the state of the nation. You know, you look at. Uh, the NHS and immigration being out of control. You look at our image in the world, how that's that's been trashed. You look at the in fact we have the highest taxes ever. We've got the highest national debt ever. We've got the lowest pensions in Europe. We've got strikes. So many, many, many problems. Uh, and this little twit is going around telling us how well everything is is doing. And I wonder, I mean, he's probably got personal reasons, but I wonder why he wants to hang on. Why he doesn't just, just chuck it all in? Why does he have a general election, get it over and done with? He must know there is no way he's going to pull this back. And he's got a lot of bad news coming up. I mean, he's got uh, uh, three by-elections coming up in the next, uh, this month, uh, all of which he's almost certain to lose uh, by significant swings. He's uh, got the count on me council elections coming up, where I'm sure the Tories are going to do extremely badly. His uh, Rwanda deal has every chance of failing and not getting getting off the ground. And uh, something else he should be very concerned about is that uh, uh, the COVID inquiry, uh, Lady Hallett has said she will publish an interim report uh, in the next couple of months. And that is almost certainly going to show him in a very bad light, and particularly uh, with regard to his failure to to uh, uh, provide his WhatsApps. So it's now a bad news for him. And you can't see any bad, any good news anywhere. Where, where's the good news coming from? Nothing's going nothing's to happen suddenly to make things go well. Uh, things are likely to get, get worse. We all know that the consequences of the new import controls are going to be negative. They're going to make prices higher and uh, food shortages and so on. And, uh, and so in, uh, in some, we've got... Uh, a prime minister leading the nation, a prime minister in whom no one has any confidence at all, and who is obviously incompetent, who everyone can see is incompetent, uh, and yet we've no way, no mechanism of getting rid of him. And unless he chooses to go himself, he's, we're going to we're gonna have to put up with him. And it does seem a really, really sad state of affairs. But let's, uh, let's hope perhaps that... Uh, that he will see sense and will call an early general election and uh, get it over and done with, uh, and we can all start getting on with our lives again, uh, and uh, and do away with this 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 interminable headache that is uh, 
the Sunak leadership. Anyway, uh, uh, that's what I think about it. If you've watched this far, thank you very much indeed. And uh, as always, and uh, until next time, bye for now.